In this video clip, I'm going to explain how it is possible to stop heart attack using simple breathing exercise. This breathing exercise was developed by Russian doctor Buteyko. He taught about 200 Russian medical doctors how to apply this breathing exercise on thousands of heart disease patients in Soviet Union and later in Russia. First of all, let us consider what is going on with breathing of heart patients at rest when we don't have any heart attack. This is a diagram from my website, normalbriefing.com. So the normal briefing is only 6 liters of air for one minute. It's a very small amount. In eight medical studies, we found that heart patients breathe much more air than the norm. It is known that angina pain, which takes place during heart attack, is caused by one factor only, low level of oxygen in the heart muscle tissue. Now the question is then, what is going on with oxygenation of the heart muscle? when we breathe too much. When we breathe too much, we cannot increase oxygenation of our arterial blood because during normal breathing, which is again very, very small, only 6 liters per minute, our arterial blood is about 98% saturated with oxygen. Hence, overbreathing cannot improve oxygenation of the blood. Now, but when we breathe too much, we remove carbon dioxide. And many medical studies found that Reduction of carbon dioxide in our body, which is called hypocapnia, causes vasoconstriction or shrinking of our blood vessels, and that reduces perfusion of blood supply to all vital organs, including brain, heart, kidneys, liver. Study. Effect of arterial carbon dioxide tension on regional myocardial tissue oxygen tension in the dog. Article in Japanese, Mazui, 1991. Department of Anesthesiology, Yokohama City University School of Medicine. Hypocaptic hyperventilation invariably resulted in a significant reduction of coronary blood flow and left ventricular myocardial tissue oxygen to tangent in both epicardial and endocardial layers. The same result of a briefing causes reduced heart oxygenation was found in many other studies. You can see the titles below. About 10 years ago, American Journal of Cardiology published a study in which 206 patients with uh, coronary artery spasm were asked to perform a simple test. We were asked to hyperventilate. Here is the quote. The abstract of the study says, These findings imply that hyperventilation is a highly specific test for the diagnosis of coronary artery spasm and that hyperventilation test positive patients are likely to have life-threatening arrhythmias during attacks and multivessel spasm. Hyperventilation as a specific test for diagnosis of coronary artery spasm. American Journal of Cardiology, 1997. So it's logical to suggest if we try to breathe little less, we would get more CO2 in the body and that would delay blood vessels, improve oxygenation of the heart muscle and prevent a heart attack. There is also another related factor which is exceptionally important for heart patients and all other people. I'm talking about breathing group. We can breathe either through the nose or through the mouth. When mouth breathing takes place, we do not utilize one important hormone, which is called nitric oxide. About 10 years ago, three scientists got a Nobel Prize for their discovery about fundamental role of this hormone for cardiovascular system of the human body. We found it's a powerful dilator of blood vessels. And when we don't breathe through the nose, nitric oxide cannot be utilized. It's naturally produced in sinuses of the human body and blood vessels constrict, causing effect similar to hypocapnia, or low level of carbon dioxide in the human body. Therefore, nasal breathing is fundamental in order to prevent and stop heart attack, and it's crucial for well-being of heart patients. So what are the six simple steps to prevent or stop heart attack or angina pain? Step number one, listen to your breathing. You would notice that it's heavy, big and deep. Now the next step would be to breathe only through the nose. Step number three, you have to sit down and relax. You should embrace yourself and try to use diaphragm for breathing, not your chest, because you would notice the chest breathing is going to be heavy. So what you should do, 
we should take small inhalations using the diaphragm and then relax for exhalation. Don't push out air forcefully, just relax. Then take another inhale, which is a little bit smaller than you want, and again relax for exhalation. What would happen during this reduced breathing, so-called, you breathe a little bit less. And you are naturally get desire to breathe more, so-called shortage of air, or slight sensation of air hunger. So if you maintain this slight air hunger for about two, three minutes, you would notice that symptoms of angina pain are going to disappear. Russian doctor found that more than 90% of patients are able to prevent heart attacks using this simple breathing exercise. But in some more severe cases, we found that it's good for patients to take their medication. You can probably take only half of your normal dose of medication and compensate the rest by continuing this reduced breathing for another two, three, five minutes until you feel comfortable so that your angina pain subsides to such a TV so, so it does not threaten your life anymore. So if these heart patients learn normal breathing, so we learn how to breathe in accordance with medical international norm, these people are going to be very far away from the level of breathing when we are going to have heart attack. So what we need to do is, of course, to learn normal breathing using, for example, Buteyko breathing method. 